What's up guys, my name is Zach or Optic 2 Bar and welcome to video 3 of my basic training series. This series is designed to help you guys get better at the basics so you guys can follow along with my more advanced tutorials. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. If you need some files to edit with, I have a download link in the description. You can download some clips and some, you know, some gunshots and stuff, all that good stuff. So you can go ahead and download that. Link is in the description. Alright, so here we are in After Effects. What I'm going to do is actually, first of all, let me delete this comp really quick. I'm just going to go ahead and make a new comp. Uh, let's just make it around 20 seconds long is fine and uh, press OK. So this video I'm going to be going over one of the most important parts of After Effects. We went over keyframes a little while ago. We're going to go more in depth with that later. But this one is going to be on layers. And uh, you've probably noticed, let me just, you know, make a few layers here. That After Effects just stacks layers on top of each other, okay? So hold on, let me delete these really quick. Layers can be anything from audio to uh, video clips or stuff that is made inside of After Effects. So an example of that would be if I went up to Layer, New, I can make all sorts of different things. I can make a text object, a solid, a light, camera, null object, and all of this stuff we'll go over later. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and make a solid it'll pop up with uh, options similar to what happens when you make a new composition and most of the time you're gonna want to make it comp size so you can just click this button you can change the color for now but you can always change this later for now I guess I'm gonna make it a a gray like that and then just press OK alright now you can see we have our gray layer in our composition I'm also gonna go ahead and go up to layer new and then make a text object and then I can go ahead and start typing text. I'm just going to type in tutorial. We actually have our text tool activated. We haven't talked about tools yet, but for now, just go ahead and go back to your selection tool, which is your main tool that you want to use most of the time. And that'll just deselect the text and accept it, and we're good to go. All right, so now we have two layers in our composition, and the tutorial text is above the dark gray solid. So if I move the dark gray solid above the text, the text would disappear behind it. And you can see it is still there. It's just behind the layers. So you can see that anything that is on top of something will hide it. I'm just going to move it back up to the top for now. So in the timeline panel, you can twirl down the settings for each layer. We've talked about this before. So you can see you've got all sorts of different options. But you've also got this little eye switch. So the eye switch will temporarily turn it off if you want to hide it. And this little dot here will solo the layer, so every other layer except for that layer will disappear. So it's pretty useful if you're working with, you know, one layer at a time to just focus on that layer. All right, I'm going to go ahead and unsolo that again, and I'm going to hide the text. So you may be asking, what's the point of making a solid? It just looks pretty boring. What would you want to do with the solid? Well, two things is what I usually use them for. First is for background. So you can see I have just a basic background here. I could go ahead and add effects to it. Just to show you guys, I'm going to add a ramp effect and just drag that onto the dark gray solid. And you can see we've got like a nice little design tool that we can create a little background. So you can see that's one use for using solids. But that's not the only one. Another one, if I delete the effect really quick, is making custom shapes using the pen tool. So I think I'm actually going to go over both tools and layers in this composition so I can kind of put them together. So I mentioned you can create custom shapes with your solids. So the way that you do that is you select your solid, go up to the pen tool, and you can just click, and then click, 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 click. You can keep clicking and you can draw out your shape and then if you close it, it'll create a mask. And you can see if I go back to my selection tool and click away, that we have this crappy little shape that I made. And then if I twirl down the settings for the, the solid, you can see that masks have popped up. So here's that mask I just drew. And you have some options. You can uh, feather out the mask. You can uh, expand the mask or detract it. And uh, you got the opacity of the mask. You can also set the mask to subtract so it'll do the opposite of what you created. And so this mask will show whatever is behind it. In this case, it's just transparency behind it, so it shows up as black. 
But if I turn the text back on and put it below and maybe scale it up really quick, you can see that it shows that part of the text, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that mask and shut off our text again. All right, so this time I'm going to select the pen tool again, but I'm not going to select any of my layers. And what this will actually do is it'll create a new layer called a shape layer. You can see it created the shape layer if I click and make a first point. And this is basically the same as a mask, but it gives you different uh, properties uh, for messing around with that shape. So if I twirl down the settings here, you've got contents. And let me twirl this up. You've got all sorts of options for, you know, stroke. You can increase the stroke width. And uh, I didn't mention this, but you can actually click and actually all of these points are still editable. So you can still drag them around and edit them the way that you want which is cool. So I encourage you to mess around with these settings a bit and get to know them a little bit with shape layers. I'm not going to go over them too much because you know you can't spend too much time on everything so let's just keep moving. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. So some other tools that are up here you've got uh, your hand tool and you may see me use this tool quite a bit. Let's say for example let me uh, move this text back up and turn it on. So let's say I was working on maybe a closed design on this and I wanted to see what it looked like zoomed in. So the way you can actually zoom in is if you open this up, you can zoom to 100%, to 200%, or you could just use your scroll wheel, or the shortcut is control plus, or control minus to zoom in and out. And so let's say I was zoomed in a lot, okay? Now what if I wanted to look at, at a different part of the image? Well, you can come up to the hand tool, and then you can just move it around, and you can kind of you know, scrub through this picture and then you can go back to the selection tool. But check this out. It's kind of annoying to go all the way up here. And even if you learn the shortcut, which is H, it's still pretty slow to click it and then go back to your selection tool and then, you know, go back and forth like that. So there's a cool feature in After Effects called temporary tools. And the way temporary tools work is if you look at the shortcut for your tool that you want, and instead of just clicking the key for that tool, what you actually do is you hold down that key and you can, while holding it down, you can do whatever you want with that tool. And as soon as you let go, it'll go back to the tool that you had before. So it's a really easy way to just quickly access a tool and then go back. And instead of using H for hand, what I do is I use spacebar. You hold it down and then you have access to the hand tool and once you let go of the spacebar, you're back to the tool that you're working on before. Now the hand tool works everywhere, not just on the viewer panel. Let's say I had a bunch of effects on my, on a layer, let me just duplicate this a bunch of times. What you can do is actually use the hand tool to, to sort of scroll up and down without using the uh, annoying, this thing. And it also works on the timeline and I use this a ton. So get used to using the temporary tool of holding down the spacebar to get to the hand and then letting go of spacebar to get back. It's so useful. That's a pro tip for you guys. I'm going to select all of these and delete them. So let me quickly just go over the other tools that we have here. We've got uh, zoom. I don't use this at all. This is just a really slow way to zoom in on your footage. Like I said, there's a bunch of different ways that you can do that. So I usually use the uh, control plus or just my scroll wheel. If you have a scroll wheel, it's a lot easier. The next one is the rotate tool. So you can click and drag on any layer and it will rotate if you have that tool selected. And the same thing applies for the temporary tools. So the shortcut is W. So if you hold down W, you can rotate a layer and once you let go of W, you get back. So it's a really easy way to just quickly you know, I could be moving it around, rotating it. Just a really easy way to access the tool temporarily. The next tool is for cameras. And we haven't gone over cameras yet, but this is basically the tool that you would use to access all the functionality of the camera. So one thing I want to mention is anytime you see this little arrow here, uh, I don't know if you can see, you may want to bump up the quality so you make sure you see it. If you actually hold down on that button, you have multiple different tools within that tool set. So uh, the other ones here don't have that, but for example, this one does, the pen tool does, the 
text tool does and uh, the pin tool does, the puppet pin tool. So keep that in mind. The pan behind tool is also a little bit more advanced, so we'll cover that later. The rectangle tool is a great way to draw a perfect rectangle if you're trying to make a mask or just make a rectangle. So if I select the solid, grab the rectangle tool, and I can draw the rectangle, and you can see I've got a nice rectangle. I'm going to delete that mask. We already went over the pen tool, but the pen tool has some more advanced options that we'll probably get into later. Here's the type tool. So if you select the type tool and you click, it'll create a new text layer. So I can go ahead and start typing. And once you're finished typing, you want to press enter on the number pad and it will accept the options or you can type something out and then just go back to your selection tool manually. All right, so all of these other tools are a bit more advanced too, so I'm not going to go over them in this tutorial, but I hopefully, hopefully you guys will use this tool panel up here because it is pretty useful. One quick thing before we move on, I, I mentioned that you could use the rotate tool to rotate things, but that's not the only way to rotate something. So, so a quick shortcut is if you select a layer, so I'm going to select this tutorial layer, and the shortcut for rotation is R. And once you press R, rotation will pop up. You can also access that through the drop down under transform and you can just scrub the numbers left and right. That's also another way to rotate stuff and it's a bit easier because you can actually see the, the actual values of the rotation. So that's the way I usually do it. So press R, get the numbers and so on. So every layer also has these handles here and what these handles will do is if you grab them, you can actually scale it up or flip it and do all sorts of things. If you hold down shift, it will scale in proportion. But you can also access the scale properties by pressing S on your keyboard if, with the layer selected down here. It'll pop up with scale. You can also access that through the transform down here. So there's so many ways to do the same thing, but uh, you just have to pick the way that you like best. When you create a new text object, uh, I forgot to mention that the uh, character panel will pop up. So let me move this over here a little bit easier to see. And uh, this just gives you some options on, you know, changing the font, you can change the font, you can change the, the size, you can change other options like the tracking and the, you know, stretch. And uh, you can change the color by clicking this color swatch here and just changing the color. You have to make sure that you are selecting all of your text that you want to change which is pretty cool because then you could select, you know, this half and change the color to, you know, white and uh, you have more control. If you click this button down here, this is the stroke. And right now there is no stroke because there's a line going through, which means there's no stroke active. So if I select my text and change this to, let's say, a blue, press OK, you can see that we have a blue stroke now. And with your text selected, you can scrub this number and change the stroke. So you've got all these cool different options uh, and I encourage you to mess around with them, get used to them. And that's all in the character panel. If you want to get back to the character panel, if you close it, go to uh, window character panel and it pops back up. I'm going to go ahead and move it back here for now. So if you're going to be making solids and text all the time, I recommend that you learn the shortcuts. The shortcut for creating a solid is control Y and it brings up the options and the shortcut for text is control T and that'll bring up your text object then you just click and type enter and then delete so those are just some uh, useful shortcuts you probably should learn alright so moving on to some other layers that we have if I go to the layer drop down new so we went over text and solids lights are pretty advanced but let me just show you really quick I'm not gonna expect you to learn this but if I showed you if I make all of these layers 3d you can use a light to affect your 3d objects so you could you know animate a light going around here and you know I could change this color to maybe a, a cool color and you've got kind of a cool light effect and you've got all sorts of different options you know to mess with the light so you know that exists. Um, you can try to mess around with that if you want, but it's more advanced, so we'll be going over that later. Um, if I go back to new, we talked about camera. So camera's the same sort of thing. It's it's advanced. It works well with 3D objects, which we haven't talked about yet. 
but you can see that you've got kind of a 3D tool in After Effects. It's not great, but it's, it's pretty useful for simple animations and so on. So you know that that exists, that's how you make a camera. I go back to Layer, New, we've got a Null Object. And a Null Object is basically an invisible object you can use to connect different layers together and uh, do some things that are more advanced again. A lot of these layers we're going to be going over later. I just want to know. I just want to make sure you guys know that they exist. But there is one last layer that I want to make sure that we cover. And uh, we already talked about shape layers, but if you want, you can also make a shape layer just by uh, clicking this here. But adjustment layer is a pretty useful layer. It shows up as a different color. It's a blue-ish color, purple. And uh, by the way, a quick tip is if you click this swatch on any layer, you can change the color um, if you want to. So uh, you can organize it that way. So an adjustment layer, um, what, what's special about an adjustment layer? It looks invisible, right? It's just an invisible layer. But what it does is any effect that you apply to an adjustment layer affects all the layers below it. So watch this. Check this out. So if I grab an effect, let's say... Uh, you know, just turbulent displacement. We've used that before, so it's pretty familiar. You can see that it affects all the layers. So what's special is if I just apply the, the effect to one of the layers, you can see that it works, but then I would have to go ahead and copy it to each layer, make sure that it all works, and that just doesn't work out. So an adjustment layer is really useful that you keep everything consistent among all the layers below it. So uh, let me delete this really quick. So if I, if I apply that turbulent displacement back to it, you can see that it affects all the layers below it. But if there is any layers above it, those remain unaffected. So you can control which layers are being affected. And uh, it's really useful for things like color correction. Because if I wanted to, let's say, I don't know, blur it out. You can blur out all of them. You can blur out all of them except for that text. And uh, adjustment layers is a really good way to control which effects are being applied to which layers. All right, I think that's enough for you guys to mess around with and uh, go on and learn on your own because that's the point of these tutorials, not to show you how to do something, but show you what you can use to make something else. So hopefully you will use layers and so on and go ahead and maybe even watch some of my other more advanced tutorials and you maybe you'll understand those a bit better. So from now on, anytime you'll see me use the hand tool, you'll know how to do that. Uh, if I, you know, I'm zooming in uh, and you'll know about the hand tool, you'll know about the pen tool that I use to draw shapes and so on. You'll know how to use temporary rotation tools. So if you want some more advanced tutorials to watch, here's a list of some of my latest tutorials. Go ahead and check those out if you want. I'll catch you guys in the next video.